This is a video walkthrough of the exam one key, and I'm going to point out the uh, most common errors and some things you should watch for. So for the first one, rate of change is asking you really for the slope from the points where x is 1 and x is 3, so you need to go find those y values, just find the slope between them, and that's going to give you 12. For the next one, you needed to go ahead and find what you should have as your function down here, and then um, more focused on, though, this guy. And so let's focus on that. Uh, for the denominator, negative x cannot be equal to 0, so x cannot be 0. And then from this other one, only the 1 minus x is inside that root. So 1 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So 1 has to be greater than or equal to x. So go ahead and draw a number line. Here's the 1. x is going to be equal to 1 or less, so it goes this way. But we know x can't be 0, so you have to put a hole there. And so that means we're going to take all x from negative infinity up to 0, but not including it. That's what this is saying. And then from 0, not including it, up to 1, including it, which is what this is saying. So C. For 3, I went ahead and labeled, drew and labeled a graph because the student hadn't put that on here. I recommend that you do that. It's going to be more helpful for you to find these pieces. Uh, for intercepts, we've got two of them, about negative 3.5. And then 0, 3, just put zeros in for x's to get exactly 3. This is not an approximate. It is exactly 3. So if you're using your table on your calculator, you probably got a number of these incorrect because you're using approximates from the calculator. You need to use the graphing window and the value key, or when you know, throw a 0 in there. You just get a positive 3 for that. Domain all real numbers because it takes all x's and all y values. It is increasing. You're going to look at the y's and write the x's. So the y values from left to right are getting bigger, bigger, bigger till you get to here. So negative infinity to about negative 2.15. It's okay if you put 2.2. Union then decreasing, then increasing here from x is about 1.5 to infinity. The decreasing occurs from here to here. So about from 2.15 or 2.2 and a negative, there should be a negative here, negative, sorry, there he is, <laughs> a negative all the way up to about 1.5. This is uh, never constant, and you need to say that this was not on this one. Algebraically, even, odd, or neither, I know you can look at it and graphically see that it is neither, but you've got to do it algebraically. So all you have to do is substitute in the f of negative x and simplify and then check. Is that equal to the original function? No. Is it equal to negative the original function? No. So it's not equal to either of those, so therefore it's neither. When you write this relative extrema, you're looking for local max and mins, and you need to write them as sentences. So if you have the phrase STMT with a question mark, that's a statement. It means you're missing the statements and you wrote them as points. Or you didn't say whether it was a min or max. You need that information as well. So write them as full sentences. When there are no absolute extrema, you need to say so. This graph goes forever down and forever up. And so, yes, you have no absolute extrema here. For the last one, solving this, you want to rewrite the 4 as 2 squared and the 8 as 2 cubed because you recognize they're both powers of 2. Multiply in using the power rule. Or here, this student just went ahead and equated the exponents and then did the multiplication. Either one is fine. So bring the exponent down, then multiply in. This is where an error occurred for a lot of students. 2 times 1 is 2. And then multiply the 3 in for the right-hand side, then go ahead and solve it. It's a linear equation. So again, the most common error was misapplying the power rule and then also mismultiplying. For this one, we're looking for a function and its inverse. And you can take the original function and just put 0 in for x and get a negative 1, and then put another value in for the x and get the other value. And go ahead and then sketch that straight line. You had a ruler. Uh, these should be straight lines. So that's the f of x points. The student then went ahead and swapped the domain and range pieces to graph the other one. Simplest way to graph this inverse. Of course, you could go find it algebraically, then graph it. 
you take, this is y equals 2x minus 1, switch the x and y, solve for the new y, don't forget to rename it because you didn't find y, y is this original one, you need to, because we're within the same problem, you need to rename it. So you lost a little point there if you forgot to rename it. A secant line is just asking you to find the line that crosses the curve in two different places. Negative 3 and 0 are the x values. Go find the y's. That's what this student did here. That's what this work is. Then to get the equation of a line, you just need the slope. So this is slope. You should probably label that. This is not labeled either. You should label that so when you go back and see it. And then they use this. Some students use y equals mx plus b and found the b. Either way is fine. They both work. For number seven, you want to have a college fund of 250000 That's the A. If he can invest money now, compounded monthly, so compounded monthly, N is 12, so that she has that many in 18 years, so that is 18. How much money do you have to invest? So how much does need to be invested now needs to have um, P? I see here the he's and she's are mixed up here, so sorry. And so go ahead, take these numbers and place them into your formula. You need to have this first equation, then solve it for P, approximate it, and that then tells you how much money. Now, most common error for students, we're approximating what's inside these parentheses or approximating this denominator. And when you do that, you end up with a wrong answer. So don't round early. Take the whole thing with you and then go ahead and round at the very end. For the last piece, you did not have to solve anything. You just wanted to go ahead and set up the equations. This was me testing, do you know which equation to use? And so for continuously, you use the one that has the base E in it. And P for principal, 700, R and T. For the other one, semi-annually, it even says twice a year, so you knew that that was a 2. Uh, for monthly, it'd be 12. Daily, 365. This is semi-annually, so that's twice in case you forgot that, putting those values in there. And it is not continuously. You needed to use this compounded how many times a year formula. Last page for this one, a bubble and arrow diagram is this bubble and then arrows. Not one-to-one. -one. You have two options here, actually. You could show that this is not a function so that you have any single x value that goes to two y's. Then it couldn't be one-to-one because -one, it must be a function to be one-to-one. -one. And, or you could just say not one-to-one, -one, meaning two different x's have the exact same y. So if you chose one, you didn't know which one to go back to. So this is a correct depiction of not one-to-one. -one. Drawing the inverse function, I recommend that you just pick a couple points, like this student did, and then switch the domain and range, switch the x and y, and then just plot the other line on there. For this one, you are trying to shift it and this is telling you to go right 3, and this is telling you to go up 3. So you want to go right 3, and check the grid numbers. Sorry, that's not going to fit there. And then up 3. And it looks like this stu student mistook the crosshairs. These crosshairs are not the ones. Notice there's a one, a two, a three. So if you want to go right three, you've got to go all the way over to here and then up here. And then each of the other points follow. you got a 45, and so this is heading in this direction when it goes up three as well. So up three is one, two, three, four cubes, not half cubes. So the most common error was to misread this grid and not look at the uh, index values. This one does that same uh, thing of moving them from left to right, uh, reflections. Do you know what you should be doing with that? And so the parent function has been flipped across, oh, sorry, <laughs> flipped across the x-axis. That's with this negative sign. Shifted two values to the left. That's because it says plus two here. And then made skinnier or stretched by a factor of three. That's the three. The negative does the reflecting. The three does the stretching. Now, some people said it was compressed horizontally. That is also true. So getting it skinnier and stretching it vertically does compress it horizontally. So that was marked correct if you had that. You did not have to say by a factor of three, but you needed to have these three pieces taken into account, the negative, the three, and then this negative two inside. 
Now, when we look at this bonus question, you start with the point two four. Use your description to where this point ends up getting shifted. Well, if you are going to go left two, left two from two four, it's going to take you to zero four. So that's the left two. And then you are going to reflect across the axis. When you reflect across the axis, that gives you negative four. And then lastly, you're going to multiply by three to give yourself an extension. And so you get negative 12. So this should be zero, negative 12. This other bonus question was a lot more complicated. And I think that you can do this. We did one in class. You had some on My Labs Plus for homework. And so you take the function, this is y, switch the x's and y's. That was worth half a point just to switch them. And then multiply by y plus 1 on both sides. When you do that, x times y plus 1 is xy plus x. That's a common error. A lot of students put a 1 there. This numerator stays here. Now you have to get all the y terms on one ter side and the x's on the other. So that's what's happening in this step. Once you get that, you want the y by itself. So factor the y out of here. When you do that, y times x gives you that. y times negative 2 gives you this. And so now you've got that. This guy comes along for the ride. Divide by x minus 2, and you get this. Remember, this is now the inverse. Don't forget to name that, uh, rename that. That student forgot that on the front page, too. But it is renamed over here on the right. So we've got two functions now. We've got the original function which is 2x minus 1 over x plus 1. And then we have the inverse here. And it's OK to have x plus 1 over 2 minus x, the negative sign switched around in there. That's OK. So now, to check to see if they're inverses, you need to do the composition. f of f inverse of x, and then ver vice versa, f inverse of f of x. So you're going to take the inverse and put it into the original function. Take this, put it into every x in the original function. The student then multiplied by the LCD numerator and denominator to clear the fractions. See if you can work through that algebra. And then for the next one, went ahead and did f inverse of f. So take the original function and put it into the inverse. That's what's happening here. Clear the complex fractions to get this nice, beautiful fraction then. Simplify terms, and you end up with x. You need to have f inverse of x f of f inverse of x equal to x, which is also equal to this guy. And so since that's true, which is what the student is saying down here, they are inverses of each other. So this was a more complicated bonus question. I would have hoped that you were able to get this left sign and at least find that inverse. And so that's it. If you have questions, I highly recommend you come see me ASAP as we continue to move forward. I hope you're having a blessed day.